everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Gas Guzzlers Extreme. So make sure you have your Monster Energy drinks and your Mountain Dew and your Doritos 3D. Maybe put on some Papa Roach or something, because we're about to get real extreme with three X's, but not any breasts. So I apologize if you were on the lookout for that. This is a new arcade racer that came out on Steam, and it occupies kind of an unusual position, because this is an indie game-ish, but it's also like $25, although it's uh, $20 for its opening week sale. Uh, but it's $25 normally, so it's kind of like positioned as like a double A racing title, if you ask me. Uh, that's my opinion on it anyway. Uh, it's kind of a little like, um, Death Race, or sorry, Death Rally, what I played, which I played last year, but instead of being like a top-down RC car style or Micro Machine style, it's actually like your standard behind the car, uh, third-person camera. And I've got some positive things to say, I've got some negative things to say. Probably more uh, negative than positive, to be honest with you. So I, I guess I'm spoiling my impressions a little bit, but I do have a mixed opinion on the game, to put it politely. Uh, so just before we get started here, I will explain what we have going on with our kind of garage here. This is my car. Uh, I've been sponsored by Buttvosser, who is the kind of Budweiser analog in the game. Uh, I performed well enough in races that I got a sponsorship that allows me to get more money. Basically what we do, buy a car, upgrade it, run out of money, race, Get more money from winning the races, upgrade our car more, and thus, you know, climb the ranks. Right now we are rank 11 uh, on our kind of leaderboards you can see here. And of course, lots of incredibly clever names. Jedi Knight, Marijuana, Lubricant, get it? Um, Rickwers. I don't know if I get that one, but you know, all of these, uh, clever enough, I guess, if you're into that sort of thing. Although, is it just me or is number 16 some dumb guy? Just comes across as a little bit offensive if you ask me. I'm Blast Hard Cheese, so I guess I'm one to talk, but in any case, uh, let's get started here. We're going to continue. We'll start with a race because this is um, obviously the kind of focus of the game. I'm not going to play predominantly the single player campaign, but I will take a look at the server browsers later. Uh, there is kind of a multiplayer community about this game. Not a large one necessarily, at least not yet, uh, but there are servers that you can actually play on if you choose to get this game for yourself. So we're going to start with a battle race. This is the most fun race type in uh, Gas Guzzlers Extreme in the hour or so that I've played so far. Um, the other one's Power Race is just a race, basically. There are still power-ups, but it's mostly just whoever gets to the finish line first wins. The power-ups are non-gun related for the most part, although you can still get like landmines and oil slicks. And then there's Knockout, which is essentially like the same as a battle race, but every lap one person gets knocked out. So those are pretty typical uh, racing game modes. Now, the first thing I want to point out here is that I'm not sure how this is going intera to interact with Fraps. Maybe we're going to get some frame rate hits. But, uh, Gas Guzzlers Extreme is a really, really shockingly good-looking game, uh, considering the price point and considering the reputation that some, uh, you know, indie-ish racing games have. I say indie-ish because I'm not necessarily 100% sure the affiliation the developers and publishers have. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty good. The lighting effects are nice. The environmental effects, like, with dust getting kicked up are pretty good as well. And the modeling on the cars is not bad. And, you know, I'm not necessarily comparing this... Uh, to games like Forza, for example, or Gran Turismo, but to, you know, other stuff like Bang Bang Racing, for example, that, that occasionally uh, comes out on Steam. It is not necessarily uh, the most beautiful thing to look at. This game looks pretty good. Now, music-wise, a lot of, like, generic kind of hard-driving hard driving rock and roll. It kind of reminds me of the music in the Trial series, which is probably, like, the worst thing about the Trial series. But let's talk about what we've actually got going on here. Very simplistic controls. Um, you, oh, we're going to be able to start shooting at each other right now. Um, but very simplistic controls. I'm actually using the keyboard in, for this, and uh, that's because it doesn't look like the game has controller support yet. There is like a controller or an, an input options menu where it looks like you should be able to enable a joystick, but it was blacked out for me for some reason, even though my uh, USB controller that I use for like literally everything that I play on the PC except for Hearthstone uh, actually is uh, plugged in. But anyway, uh, it's just it, it's totally fine nonetheless. It's arrow keys to drive. Uh, including brake, which is just down on the uh, arrow keys, and in addition to that, uh, S is your shoot key, so you do kind of use like right hand arrow keys, uh, left hand power ups and stuff. Uh, a is going to drop whatever power up we have if we have one, so if we get like landmines or something like that, we can use those. And uh, X is shoot behind us, but I don't believe that our weapon is enabled to do this, but S is our, uh, our shoot key. So you can also see on the interface there, um, the thing to the left of my speedometer represents how much, how much boost I have, so I actually do have a decent amount here. The zero on the bottom represents how much ammo I have, which is kind of a pervasive complaint that I'm going to bring up a lot here is that ammo is extremely limited, which is not necessarily an objective negative, but is kind of annoying to the flow of the game. Ooh, that hurt a little bit. And um, the right side represents our power-up meter if we end, ever end up uh, getting a power-up, which is not, you know, 
something that comes up all that often, uh, depending on how you drive, but occasionally it can. So there's all different kinds of power-ups you can get on the map as well. I apologize for explaining this in such uh, rigorous detail when it's pretty typical of the genre, but, you know, it's nice to know that everyone's on the same page. So red power-ups are, are, like, competitive or adversarial power-ups. That's just nitro right there, so we'll get a bunch of that. Uh, but if I run over ammo, that gives us, as you might expect, ammo. You can see we're up to like 159 bullets down there. Uh, if I run over that, that is a landmine. I can hit A to drop that down on the ground, and maybe someone will run into it eventually. Uh, by the way, I apologize for that steam overlay. I always tell it not to come up, and it oftentimes decides uh, to fuck me, basically. Or say fuck me, anyway. Um, but uh, the yellow stuff is basically just... Uh, currency that we can pick up, so if we roll over that, we'll get extra money that we can spend once we actually get out of the game. Uh, and the green stuff is just positive stuff for us, so usually that takes the form, maybe always actually, that takes the form uh, of repairs. Which is good, because you want to make sure your car is running, because if you die, you get knocked out of the race. There are no respawns, so people typically tend to have a, a decent amount of health, and uh, with this decent amount of health, it's difficult to kill them, but if you kill them, you knock them completely out. I actually don't know if the AI can repair on the fly. It seems like once they get whittled down, they just kind of stay there. So, it, it is fairly difficult to get a kill. Um, not just because, you know, you've got to aim with your car while you're driving, which can be uh, kind of cumbersome. Uh, but additionally, as you can see, these racers have a decent amount of health. With the amount of bullets that we have, we might be able to kill this guy, but it's going to be close. There's actually a double damage power-up, which is exceptionally useful in kind of facilitating our uh, murderous rampage ways here. Uh, I'm gonna run out of bullets, but he's gonna, at the very least, be close to dying. And, by the way, you do get rewards for, um, for killing people in the game and, and accomplishing other kind of adversarial objectives. Like, if we run over this oil slick, which I did, uh, that'll not only affect my handling, but whoever put the oil slick down actually will get oh, some extra... Oh, I didn't get the bullets there. That sucks so much, because if I get some bullets, I could probably kill this guy. And he's in first right now. I should point out, by the way, I've never actually died in the game myself. Uh, I believe it's possible, I just don't think it, it's come up yet. So I did pick up a double damage power up there, and now I've got some more ammo. So if I actually manage to catch up to this guy, I can probably knock him out of the race for good. That uh, Nitro is not going to be good for him. So you can see my double damage power up is ticking downwards there, but I'm pretty confident that I'm going to be able to wipe this guy out. I also picked up some oil for myself. Holy shit, I wasn't able to kill him. That is nuts. Maybe if I, like, yeah, there we go. Just ran into him and killed him. Uh, so there are bonus objectives for every match as well, and these bonus... Oh, man, I finished in first. I wasn't even paying attention to what was going on. Um, the AI is usually pretty good. I, I have a pretty equal mix of coming in the top two positions and also doing quite poorly, so... Uh, I don't think the AI is bad. I'm playing on normal. It suggested playing on easy, but normal is going to be fine for anybody that is, uh, you know, familiar with these racers. But there are bonus objectives that you can see there that can give you more money. And that is fairly representative of your average, uh, kind of race in, uh... Uh, wait, new sponsored event. You've been invited by your sponsor to participate in a battle race against other sponsored cars. The sponsor will lend you a car and weapons for the event. All you have to do is give your best and help your team win the event. Only first place counts. If you win the event, you'll be rewarded with $4,200. Sure, why don't we do that? But in the meantime, I am going to spend some of our money that we have. We have $8,000 to upgrade uh, our car here. So first things first, we'll probably want to repair it all the way. Uh, and then we'll... Uh, I, we can get a new weapon. What is this? The Hemp 92A Intruder. A light rocket launcher. Yes, I will take this. Uh, and we'll buy that for $5,000, which is actually pretty expensive uh, over the course of the, uh, or relative to what the upgrades I've bought so far. I should point out there's obviously a very juvenile sense of humor going on here. You're either going to like that or not like it. Obviously, uh, I'm racing for the Boner Tone Short Pistons right now, which is a great name. And, uh, of course, Butt Vosser, uh, the Budweiser knockoff. I mean, the game's called Gas Guzzlers. It, it kind of conjures that image to begin with. For what it's worth, I mostly find it kind of grating. Uh, but some people, I guess, might be into it. And I'm not one to judge. I'm not here to say that, uh, you know, you're wrong for that. So I'm going to hope that I can uh, upgrade something here. Looks like I can get new brakes. So I'll get those, and a new engine. Nope, I've upgraded this car otherwise completely. So you can also spend your money on new cars, uh, but the cars that I've unlocked so far have all been pretty bad. Uh, there are cars, of course, that you'll get later in the game, I'm assuming, that are much more powerful, but uh, the dog diaper. It's like the Dodge Viper, but it's dog poop, get it? Lord Shaggy GT, or JT, I guess, 500. Anyway, we're not going to get to these, but uh, it is... Suffice it to say that, um, you know, you start at the bottom and then you go up to the top eventually. Let us see, um, we can also customize, you know, our car with colors and stickers and whatnot. Uh, I guess I can change my license plate. Why don't we change our license plate to, um, I guess I'll use my mouse for this. This is fine. Uh, 
Oh, you can only change the color. You'd have to change your nickname then, I guess, to change the actual license plate yourself. Um, so why don't I go to the nickname here, and I will be... Um, 69, 69, 69, 69, 69. There you go. That's perfect. Uh, so that'll be our license plate now, I'm assuming. Why don't we do our race now? So uh, we've already gone over kind of like the entire upgrade system here. So we'll hit continue. Interface is a little weird sometimes. We're going to go to the sponsored uh, events. Uh, but one thing that's kind of annoying to me is that really only the battle race feels like it's that enjoyable. Like, I'm not even going to do a power race just because it's fairly boring. Uh, knockout again, it's kind of like a battle race, but you get knocked out every lap if you're in last place. That's reasonably fun, but it does eliminate kind of the fun in these games when you're in like 8th place and you manage to fight your way back to a decent position in the final map. Uh, power race is just kind of incredibly boring in my opinion. It's just like a standard race uh, with a few power-ups, but if you want to just do a standard race, Gas Guzzlers Extreme is probably not the experience you're looking for. Like, you're probably looking to pick up a Project Cars or a, you know, Forza Gran Turismo or something along those lines. Uh, but, uh, it, like, the racing engine and the complexity in this game are not to the point where I would suggest really just doing pure races in it. I, I, that's kind of uh, harsh, maybe, but it's also honest. In terms of the tracks, I mean, I'm trying to go over, like, the standard talking points for a racing game. Graphics are fine. Like, the audio I don't think is particularly strong. Uh, customization is kind of cool, but, you know, pretty quickly you can kind of top up all of the upgrades on your car, and then you're like, well, I just spent $10,000 on this car, but now I've got to upgrade to a new car to get any kind of value out of it, which kind of sucks. It'd be nice if you could up you stick with one car in, like, a given class for a little bit of time. Otherwise, it feels like I'm just wasting... I'm spending money to be able to win at the low circuits, but then, like, the cars that I've grown attached to, I can't really use when I get to the later game. You've got to, like, completely upgrade, uh... There, you gotta completely get rid of that car and pick up a new one. But anyway, um, the other talking point, I guess, would be the tracks. And um, this track is gonna be maybe even exactly the same as the last one we were in. We're gonna be in a sponsored car here, though, so it should be different. Um, but there are a decent selection of tracks. Some of them are... Uh, one second, I just want to focus here right at the top. I think I have a machine gun. Yes. Uh, uh, so we're blue, I guess, and this is a team race. So we want to try to get more points than the red team, which is... Uh, Something that shouldn't be too ooh, difficult, because the AI, um, as, as adequate as it is, I imagine that we'll be able to finish pretty well here, uh, if experience is any indicator. Now, uh, like, this is, it might indeed be exactly the same track that we had last time, so that's kind of uh, unfortunate. But there are some indoor, well, not indoor tracks, but there are some, like, course tracks uh, that are not off-road. I'm sorry about that, teammate. You kind of did it to yourself, in all honesty. Um... Yeah, there are some uh, some tracks that are course type tracks. Those are cool, and then there's you know tracks that are off road like this. Uh, decent supply. I don't know how many tracks there are in the game because to be honest with you, a lot of them do look kind of interchangeable to me. But uh, I've never reached a situation where I'm like, oh, this track again. It would be really nice if my teammate would stop shooting backwards uh, at me. Uh, I don't know if this is the right way to go. One thing I will say I like about the game is that it very much. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ! Where am I going? I think this is still good, though. Uh, it very much adheres to that kind of, like, early 2000s, late 90s era uh, sports game aesthetic. Well, not aesthetic, really, but style of, of gameplay where there are a lot of shortcuts, and the shortcuts are not necessarily marked, so if you find them, you know, it's not like every path is created equal. There are paths that are genuinely, objectively better than other paths. So uh, I, I kind of like that because I grew up playing games, you know, like Cruising USA is a bad example, but San Francisco Rush 2049 and, you know, Midnight Club 2 and stuff like that. So the more you play the tracks, the more you learn the shortcuts, you learn uh, ideal routes, and you find yourself probably doing a lot better as a result. Now, I botched that a little bit, which means I should probably... Oh, my God! I should probably learn uh, how to play a little bit better. I am a little perturbed by the fact that my uh, teammates consistently shoot at me so much, but uh, hopefully that's just an accident. So I have a ton of bullets here. I can't shoot, though. Oh, now I can. I wonder if I had to cross, like, a certain threshold. Usually on maps, you can't shoot until you cross, like, a certain barrier. There we go. All right, so we'll try to pass up Juana Die here. One thing I, I am in the dark about a little bit is that I don't... I have never died, as mentioned. Uh, and I don't know if there actually is a health meter in the game. Your car gets visibly damaged, but because I've never died, I, I actually don't know uh, if you can actually die. And if so, that seems kind of unfair. I'm sure in multiplayer you... Uh, probably can. I'm assuming, uh, otherwise it wouldn't really make much sense, but uh, mostly, like, the only problems I've had with repairs are that, or, or with uh, damage, is that you have to pay to get your car repaired after a race ends. And this is the kind of thing where 
you know, I, I always hesitate bringing stuff like this up because it's like, well, I haven't spent 10 hours with the game, right? I don't know the intricacies in, inside and out. But if the game is not very good about communicating those, I think that is a genuine flaw. There's no tutorial or anything in the game. I'm not necessarily suggesting that a tutorial is necessary, but it is kind of weird in 2013 to load up a game and be like, okay, so I like the game's not going to tell me how to play it. I actually have to go into like the input menu and see what all the keys are and then experiment with everything and figure out what they do. And I, I'm all for games not being as hand-holdy as they often are, but it, it, it is always nice to at least get a little bit of a primer in-game on what's going on. So again, it, you know, it's confirmation on whether or not I could die uh, would be one of those things that would be very nice to know. Uh, if I can die, like if the capability is there and I just haven't, I guess it's just because I'm the world's goddamn best gas guzzler's extreme player of all time. So again, uh, with respect to how this event goes, this is the first time I've ever done a sponsored event, so I don't know uh, if we are going to get... Ooh, uh, I don't know if, if it's whoever comes in first or whoever, like, aggregate has the best score uh, as far as teams go. To be quite honest with you, I'm not that invested in the... Um, Budvasser Corporation, so if they end up losing this event, uh, but I still maintain my established pedigree as a racer, I'm okay with that. Uh, and, you know, it does seem like there's a decent amount of length to the game at the time that I've spent so far. Within the first, you know, hour or so that I've played, I've performed really well in the races, but uh, I haven't really uh, kind of advanced that far. Like, as you can see in the last race, I'm still using, like, what one might consider pretty uh, low-level cars relative to the sports cars that show up in the, the later game. So... Uh, I, I hate to bring this up because it makes me sound like a stick in the mud, but names like Shlomo Sexual, I'm like, it kind of rubs me the wrong way. And if you watch the NLSS, you know that I'm okay with off-color humor, but in this, I'm just kind of like, ah, come on. Same with, like, some dumb guy. I'm like, that's pretty offensive. Like, that lady got fired on the news for accidentally reading the names of the Asiana air pilots as, like, we too low and stuff like that. And I don't know. It's just, why would you invite that kind of criticism into your game. It takes away from actually talking about the, the value of the game itself and puts the, the spotlight on something that is not necessarily relevant to the, the quality of the game. And I apologize for even bringing it up because I'm sure it's going to be uh, an issue that people are going to have an issue with in the comments. But it, I think it is worth noting that you know, sometimes I find some of the names in bad taste beyond just being really juvenile. Like, for example, a lot of the China. Like, yeah, I, I've seen Star... or not Star Wars. I've seen Austin Powers. Uh, who hasn't? I mean, I remember in, like, fourth grade, one of the kids wrote a lot of vagina on the board, and our teacher was like, Okay, kids, who wrote this? And, like, now I'm playing a game in 2013 made by, presumably, adults, and it has the same kind of joke in it. And one of the things on the Steam marketing page, or store page for the game, is like, Unique and funny brand of humor, and I'm like, I get that that's marketing, but still, you know, it would be nice if it was a little bit more clever. Willie B. Long. Joanna dies, stupid. Heinrich Maneuver. I don't actually know, know that one. Is that supposed to be like Heimlich Maneuver? Anyway, I guess they can't all be winners. Uh, we won that race, so the Budvasser Corporation is going to be very happy with us. I guess it was the number of uh, our racers that finished in the top four. Boom, we earned $4,325. Remarkable. Uh, so I've maintained my sponsorship. If, if you start to lose, and I realize, by the way, I should point this out. I realize the hypocrisy of saying that something is juvenile and thus... Like that chicken's just gonna run into the wall? It's juvenile and thus, like, something to be disparaged when I myself made my license plate 69, 69, 69. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to fit in is what I can say. Uh, so that's a pretty good example of, of the best kind of gameplay that you'll find in Gas Guzzlers Extreme. It's alright. The game looks really good. It handles okay. Uh, if you're looking for an arcade racer, though, uh, I think Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed is way more fun than this. And that's not to necessarily say that, that Gas Guzzlers Extreme is a terrible game. It's just worse in almost every respect, I think, than Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. Uh, and, like, graphically, I think Sonic looks a lot better. And, I mean, it might seem like they're dissimilar games. Like, oh, this is, like, more of a realistic arcade combat racer. Not really. You could, like, palette swap them, and uh, it wouldn't be that different. But Sonic just strikes me as more fun in the limited amount of time that I've spent with it. So there are some other multiplayer, or other modes here that we'll talk about. Multiplayer chief amongst them. Resume continues your campaign. New campaign. You can probably pick, figure that one out. That's actually a button that launches a nuclear missile somewhere in Eastern Europe. Uh, quick race. I don't understand why you would ever do this when you could just basically do a quick race in the campaign and at least earn some money for it. Uh, select profile, one of the most hotly anticipated features of the game for sure. Uh, we have options, credits, and exit game. So, you know, really there's only like two meaningful options here in my opinion. Multiplayer and uh, our single player campaign. Now, positively, oftentimes I play a lot of these games and, uh, you know, I jump into the multiplayer server browser and there's just nothing or I can't matchmake with anybody. Uh, as I refresh here, you'll see there's actually quite a lot of servers going on. 
Uh, and this is because uh, the guys who developed the game, or maybe the guys who have published it, are hosting some dedicated servers. Now, there's not necessarily a lot of players here, if I search by players. Uh, you can see there's only a couple of... Uh, oops, I've sorted in the wrong direction. You can see there's only a couple of servers that even have anybody in them. But it is worth noting that, you know, if you want to play with your friends, there might be some other people online. And there's going to be plenty of servers for you to go where you can uh, join with one another. And the servers are spread out. You know, I think this is a Slovakia, maybe. And then there's some in... Belgium or Germany, I always get the colors on the the flag confused, which is going to annoy people. A couple in the U.S. and, and lots in Europe, like Sweden and uh, uh, it was a French one I think I saw in there. Anyway, um, I'm just getting to the point basically where there is, there are some multiplayer modes in here, which is kind of cool. Uh, or sorry, some multiplayer um, infrastructure, which is kind of cool. Unlike you know some games that I played recently that uh, unfortunately just don't have any way to connect to other people. So there is a, a little bit of a multiplayer community, at least right now, that uh, you can take part in if you want to play the game. And maybe that's where you'll get more value out of it. Although, um, as we go back to the title screen here, um, I'm not going to join them, by the way, because sometimes it takes like six minutes per race. So we just sit in the lobby and you know, shoot the shit, and then we do a race, which is pretty much exactly the same as the races we've done so far. Um, but this is, uh, my, the end of my Let's Look at for Gas Guzzlers Extreme. Certainly not a terrible game, uh, at 20 to $25, depending on when you buy it. I think it's a little expensive for the value that you get from it. Uh, I think there's a definite kind of disadvantage here compared to its closest competition, which I consider to be Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. Visually, looks really nice, um, handles okay. Reasonably fun, kind of a dearth of variety in power-ups, uh, and the other modes are a little bit boring, but you could do worse than this. This is, you know, competing also with games like Death Rally and Bang Bang Racing and um, that weird little Micro Truck EX game that came out like earlier this year. Those are all really bad. Gas Guzzles was Extreme is just kind of, meh, you know, a little disappointing. Probably a little bit below average, but uh, you could do worse. Uh, there will be a link in the video description to pick up the game on Steam if you're interested. I know this isn't necessarily the most glowing recommendation, but uh, that is my honest interpretation of the game and my thoughts on it so far. Uh, make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment letting me know what you liked or did not like about the video in the section below. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more first impressions of games like this coming out on Steam. And otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.